This weather is actually glorious. So let's go up there and have a look at the wheels. So let's take a look at the finished Fast Sports rim with Dura Ace and Bitex combo. So I've been riding it for about a month now, I suppose probably about 600 kilometers. And the majority of those rides have been climbing. And you say, well, why do you pick a carbon wheel set for climbing? Well, they're not actually that heavy. Um, they're 50 mil deep. They're pretty light in the build that I've got them in. And as long as you're not really testing the braking track hard when you're braking and it doesn't get too hot then there's really no reason not to use them for climbing uh, pick the right brake pads soft compound that wear out rather than the rims and yeah i've not really used my aluminium wheels apart from a, a trip abroad to thailand where you know i get a bit worried about sticking them in a travel case and stuff like that so i use the aluminium ones there and there's some seriously long descents in thailand and it was really hot so I was a bit cautious and used the aluminium wheels. I did a 90k ride yesterday and it had over 2,000 meters so there's really no reason not to use these for climbing and descending basically. As long as they're not getting too hot. If you're going down really steep descents with prolonged braking in like 35, 40 degrees ambient temperature then I wouldn't use them but as long as you meet your braking properly they were absolutely fine. Uh, one thing on I must know about the brake pads is that they do wear down really fast but I prefer the soft compound brake pads to wear fast than the brake track on the rim. So one of the first things people worry about with carbon wheels is braking. Actually I'm going to put my neck on the line here and say these brake better with these brake pads than my aluminium wheels. And I think it's basically the pad compound. It's, it's so soft, it actually offers really good modulation. The harder compound Shimano pads that come standard with the Altegra brakes on aluminium wheels just feel a bit on and off. They're, they're good, but they do feel a little bit on and off. Whereas these, they really give some modulation with the lever. Not like disc, disc level modulation, but they do work really well. But they wear out fast. <laughs> uh, just if you're interested, these are made by Brakeco in Taiwan. You, they're available on Chain Reaction on Wiggle, I think. Uh, they are pretty rubbery and soft, but work really well. Obviously, the problem with the the carbon rim compared to the aluminium rim is, is the heat. That's the only really problem. They can make the brake pad soft enough so you don't sacrifice your rims, but it's the heat, dissipating the heat that you put into them. An aluminium rim basically works as a big radiator or a big heat sink. If you've ever put uh, an aluminium flask or a beaker under a hot tap, you'll know exactly how good aluminium is at spreading heat around really fast. You'll burn your fingers straight away. And uh, that's one good thing about aluminium is it dissipates the heat all throughout the structure really quickly and loses that heat to the air. Carbon doesn't do that, the heat stays localised here. The second point I want to talk about next to braking is the rim build quality. The quality of the drillings, the tolerances and how well they went together. In general, pretty good. You can gauge this from the front wheel. All these uh, spokes have got exactly the same tension on my meter and the, and the wheel is true. And I mentioned in the last couple of videos that if you have a badly drilled uh, rim for the spoke holes, the tensions will be all over the place even when the wheel's true. And this one went together really, really easily. The tensions, I think I've got 100 kilos in the front, it, it's enough. Um, and they're all pretty equal on the tension meter and the wheel was really easy to true. So that's kind of a testament to how good the build quality of these fast sports rims are. I'm pretty happy with that. The only thing I can't show you right now, which I was a bit concerned about when I first got them, is that when the spoke holes were drilled, from the other side you could see some of the uh, UD carbon fiber that had been pushed away by the drilling process. And it was kind of like loose, not loose, but it was peeling away from the edge of the spoke hole on the inside. Now, I've seen other rims uh, using 3K woven fabric on the inside of the spoke bed to stop that, or even layers of glass fiber to stop that when the drill goes through to stop it punching some of the uh, individual UD fibers. UD fibers are the fibers that are not woven, they're all going the same way. 
and if something punches through it it's quite easy for them to break away it's the same when the manufacturers do the bottle cage drillings when they put the drillings or the riv nuts in for the bottle cages they normally put on the internal side some 3k woven carbon or fiberglass to stop that punching effect and I've noticed on these rims there was no 3k or fiberglass presence which is a little bit concerning um, I'm gonna write to the manufacturer and ask them about that for future models because that's something I think they really should be having other than that the rims pretty good quality especially from the outside next of all this front hub Bitex RAF 12 very wide flange spacing on the hub I could have gone for heads in uh, spoke spoke arrangement would have given me a slightly wider bracing angle but I honestly don't think it's, it was necessary and on some forks if I use this in a different pair of forks with a fatter lower leg you could run into inter interference issues where the spokes are getting too close to the fork with heads in so left it heads out all radial 20 holes absolutely stiff enough for what I need really really stiff side to side absolutely chuffed with this uh, the front wheel is really yeah really perfect dead true dead even spoke tensions at 100 really easy to put together as well so I do really rate this Vitex hub comes in all different colors if you can find them as well all different anodized colors now arguably the rear wheel is where the real test of this wheel set comes in because it just does a lot more work than the front wheel it deals with braking it deals with torque transfer it deals with most of your fat ass weight coming down onto it. Yeah, the rear wheel, I've gone for 28 holes in this one, as I mentioned on the last videos, because I'm quite heavy. I do a lot of uh, climbing at quite low speeds. So the wheel RPM is low and the power is reasonably high. So that means just by the, the power equation that the torque has to be quite high. So if the torque's quite high, I want more spokes to transmit that torque to the rim and put less fatigue on each spoke. So the stress amplitude in each spoke when you're when you're talking the cassette it's going to be lower so it should give the spokes and uh the whole build kind of a longer lasting feel and make it a little bit stiffer side to side as well but 24 versus 28 spokes the lateral stiffness is increased a little bit but not much um what can i say about the rear wheel a little bit harder to true obviously because you've got the asymmetrical nature of the hub you've got uh i've gone for two cross lacing both sides so i'm relying on both sides of the hub to transfer torque not just radial on the non-drive side. I wanted two cross on both sides. Uh, like I said in the last video, it's only actually when you've got even when you've got two cross tangential lacing, it's only half the spokes on each side that do uh, the torque transfer. So if you've got 14 on each side, there's only seven on each side that are actually doing the torque transfer. If you've got radial on one side, then you've only got half the spokes on one side doing the torque transfer. So that's why I really don't like radial lacing on non-drive side. I want as many spokes to do torque transfer as I can, make the wheel stiffer, and give those those half spokes the long, longest life possible. One thing important to note, as I mentioned in the last wheel building videos, is that this rear wheel has not offset drillings as such, but it has kind of angled drillings through the rim bed. So it's a little bit more tricky to start lacing than the front where you just put all the spokes pretty much to any hole. This one you've got to pay a bit of attention on which angle the uh, spoke holes are drilled at, which dictates where that spoke goes to the drive side or non-drive side. Like I said, this one's a bit trickier to true, uh, but the rear wheel, yeah, really stiff build now. I can run the brakes pretty close to the rim without any rubbing, although I don't tend to run them very close anyway because I like a lot of pull on the levers, I like the levers to end up really close to the bar, so when I'm descending I've still got most of my hand wrapped around the bar and I only have to pull my fingers out a little bit to activate the brakes. Now, the Dura Ace Hub, why did I go to the Dura Ace Hub? Well it was on quite a good deal for me, it was, I found it really really good price, I think I got it for about £150 in the end. It's renowned for its uh, longevity, it's got cup and cone bearings which you know, some people like them, some people don't. If you can service them regularly, then they're great. If you're lazy with them, it'll probably be a nightmare. If you don't like servicing stuff, it'll be a nightmare. You can't just, you know, if you if you want a DT hub that you just take into a shop and get someone to replace the bearings, that's fine. The Dura Ace hub is a little bit heavier than the DT240. It's still pretty light for what it is, but it's got a titanium free hub body, which makes it a little bit heavier, but that's gonna be a bit more solid than an aluminium 
free hub body uh, cassette carrier so you shouldn't get those bite marks that you deal with aluminium now one thing I don't like about this Dura Ace hub is I don't know how many points of engagement it's got but it is oh, I'm not going to wind the pedals because it's stood up on that pedal but the engagement is pretty slow like there's a quite a lot of rotation before you hit before you engage the pulls on the teeth I mean on a road bike that's not a massive problem because you're kind of on the power or off the power if it was a mountain bike yeah it'd be different because on a mountain bike you sometimes kind of want to ratchet the pedals when you're doing like steep technical climbs and stuff to get over you know roots and rocks you kind of like ratcheting back and forward on the pedals and for a mountain bike you need really quick engagement on the rear hub this one is not that fast um, and actually you can notice it uh, <laughs> even if you're not pedaling very smoothly or you're pedaling in like stochastic manner you can actually notice the engagement is a bit slow but apart from that there's nothing really to to mention about that rear hub it just works it's pretty solid the bearings are buttery smooth out of the box i don't expect to have to adjust the uh, preload or service them very soon but yeah it's just a solid it's a nice build it's the type of hub that i'll be able to keep for ages and just build onto different wheels when these ones get worn so I'm, in total i'm pretty happy with that now some people like a really noisy free hub personally i hate noisy hubs i don't like the buzzing of chris kings or dt hubs and one of the reasons why i chose the dura ace because i thought it'd be really quiet i read a lot about them being quiet and if, I have friends who've had uh, Shimano wheels before, complete wheel sets, and they've had really quiet hubs, but I'll just give you a go with this one. It's quite noisy, and a lot of that noise is kind of transferred down the spokes into the rim, and the rim is like a, a big guitar, basically. It's just everything, everything in there echoes. So that's probably why I think the, the hub is noisy. But actually with this Dura Ace hub it's pretty difficult to get at the pulls in the free hub it's not something you can really service yourself quickly I'm still going to do it but uh, I'll do it when I've got a bit more time and try and make it a bit quieter because I really don't like noise I mean it's not noisy it's not like a DT240 or a Chris King it's a lot quieter but uh, I want it to be silent so there's probably people out there wondering about the weight of these wheels well it's not the lightest build because I've got 28 holes or 28 spokes in the rear wheel 20 in the front the, the front is very light because the hub is very light and 20 holes so when i weighed all the parts individually this wheel set is coming out at 1671 grams which for a 50 mil uh, clincher wheel set is pretty good considering i've got extra spokes in the rear and i've got a burly hub which is a dura ace hub which is not the lightest but uh, climbing i don't really mind using them as well I'm not going to use them when the descents get really tough because I want to save the brake track, but weight-wise, pretty good. No real reason not to use them. One more reason why I went for 28 holes on the back is to add a bit of lateral stiffness because I'm using 25 Contis, which turn out more like 27, 28. If I had a really sloppy wheel in the back, I might run into issues with the tyre rubbing the chain stays, which is absolutely, well, it's a pain in the ass. So I wanted a very stiff wheel side to side, so a little extra spokes in the rear wheel just give it a little bit more stiffness and with these 25 gp 4000 s i've not had a problem with rubbing these fast sports rims they do regard their epoxy and their brake track is very good uh, i'm not going to put it to destruction test because i've paid for these wheels and i don't want to break them but they offer i think a, a one year warranty against uh, defects in the brake track so that's pretty good um, in general, with this fast sports wheel set, would I buy them again? Yes, exactly, I would. Uh, what would I say to them if I wanted a better wheel set? I would say they need to put some 3K on the inside of the uh, spoke bed to stop those dry fibers being pushed through from the drilling process. That would be number one. Number two, I would kind of like them to offer a slightly more bulbous profile maybe slightly wider maybe 27 mil something like that i think they offer a 28 mil version uh but yeah this is pretty wide internally it's the internal width anyway that gives the tire its uh, profile and these i think 18 and a half or 19 mil internally but be wary of any carbon clincher where the internal width is very close to the external width what does that mean well that means that you haven't got much material for the brake track to be strong and with the carbon rim you really want a thick brake track so 
if you are looking at a 25 mil width on a carbon clincher and they're claiming that the internal width is 21 that only really leaves you two mil either side for the brake track and that ain't enough that's really not good enough for carbon wheels so the carbon wheel is always going to have a thicker kind of like bead or a bead seat or rim rim track than the aluminium because they like to air, edge on the side of safety and put a bit more material there so be wary of any that are really wide internally and very close to the external width these are 25.7 externally and 18 and a half or 19 internally so that's a fair bit of material there but any wider internally then you start getting a little bit too thin in my eyes for the braid track but in total i'm going to give them a 9 out of 10